When Homo floresiensis was first announced in 2003, scientists were split on whether it was an Australopithecine or related to Homo erectus. Some scientists believe that Homo floresiensis derived from African Australopithecines like the famous Lucy Australopithecus afarensis. Other, more outlandish theories abounded. Some scientists suggested a breakaway group of Australopithecines had built a raft and floated to the Melanesian Islands. Paleoanthro-cryptozoologist William Jungers of Stony Brook University believed that this was a hominid similar to chimpanzees in certain hand bone characteristics and similar to Australopithecines in its small stature, pelvic shapes, and small brain size. Still others believed Homo floresiensis descended from an isolated branch of Homo erectus and that Homo floresiensis was a classic case of insular dwarfism. From ScienceHowStuffWorks.com, insular dwarfism. This occurs when a species isolated on an island evolves to become smaller over generations due to limited resources and other environmental factors. Homo erectus was first discovered in 1891 in Java by Dutch explorer and adventurer Eugene Dubois. The island of Flores is just a few hundred kilometers from Java where Dubois first made his discoveries. It was a second Dutch explorer who discovered the cave where Homo floresiensis would later be recovered. The Dutchman explorer Theodorus Verhoeven. Theodorus Verhoeven was a Dutch speaking missionary and part time archaeologist from Belgium. He studied Greek history and archaeology at the University of Utrecht. During the Nazi occupation in World War II, Verhoeven fought in the resistance. He also gave safe harbor to Jewish children in his home. After the war, Verhoeven won a missionary assignment to Indonesia. For Verhoeven, it was a dream come true. Gregory Fourth, Bill.com 2022. Amateur paleontologist Theodore Verhoeven is best known for his discoveries of sites on Flores Island that yielded fossilized remains of Middle Pleistocene stegodons and lithic materials, suggesting early occupation by pre-sapiens hominids. Note aside, stegodons were tiny Asian elephants that went extinct in Indonesia about 100,000 years ago. Continuing, Verhoeven found remains of small-bodied Homo sapiens 3.5 thousand years ago, which he identified as proto-negritos. Continuing, Verhoeven believed Negritos survived on Flores as discrete populations during his own time. The mysterious monkey-faced people of Nagekeo. According to Forth, Dutch anthropologists of the day speculated that separate Negrito populations might still be encountered in remote mountainous parts of some islands, including Flores. One of these little people survived until 1995. His name was Zachariah Zay. He later became a Catholic priest. Some local inhabitants, including governmental administrators, referred to him as a monkey man. Joseph Glinka was a Polish priest. He was friends with anthropologist Martin Gusinde, who had served in the African Congo. Gusinde had met Zay. He relayed to forth his description. Ginke. Father Zay was, of course, quite short, with tight curly hair and a somewhat prognathous face. Continuing, Gusinde had said that in the southern part of Nagekeo, 
there were many other local inhabitants who looked just like him. Discovery of Homo floresiensis. For decades following Dutch rule, Indonesian scientists used manuscripts from the original Dutch explorers of the colonial era, including Verhoeven, to make further discoveries. Weho Saptomo is a field researcher and archaeologist affiliated with the University of Wollongong in New South Wales, Australia. He was the supervisor at the Liang Bua cave site excavation dig. Humanorigins.edu On Saturday, September 6, 2003, Indonesian archaeologist Weihu Saptomo was overseeing the excavation of Sector 7 at Liang Bua. Continuing, Benjamin Taras, a locally hired worker, was excavating the square pit when all of a sudden the top of a skull began to reveal itself. Paper 2004, a new small-bodied hominid from the late Pleistocene of Flores, Indonesia. Here we report the discovery from the late Pleistocene of Flores, Indonesia of an adult hominid with stature and endocranial volume equal to the smallest known Australopithecines. Continuing, the most likely explanation for its existence on Flores is long-term isolation with subsequent endemic dwarfing of an ancestral Homo erectus population. Professor Bart Rober, quote, it came out of left field. No one was predicting this. We found a completely new species of human. It shows there was diversity among humans until very, very recently, end quote. Continuing, quote, people say for the past 30,000 years, we've been the only human species to inhabit the planet, whereas in fact, that's rubbish, end quote. The Dutchman Vindicated on Homo Floresiensis. Smithsonian, Verhoeven was the first to report and publish that stone tools were found in association with stegodon remains in central Flores. Smithsonian, he argued that Homo erectus from Java was likely behind making the stone tools found on Flores and may have reached the island around 750,000 years ago. Continuing, at the time, paleoanthropologists took little notice of Verhoeven's claims. Many of them discounted them outright. Continuing, 30 years later, an Indonesian Dutch research team uncovered evidence at the Soa Basin, which confirmed Verhoeven's original findings. Newest discovery from the new scientist, Yosuko Keifu at the University of Tokyo and his colleagues uncovered hominin remains from Matamege, further east on Flores. The remains are about 700,000 years old and include a skull, a jawbone, and six teeth, all unusually small for a hominin. A paper has just been published in Nature on a new hominid discovery in Flores, phys.org, August 2024. Early evidence of small body size in Homo floresiensis. Abstract, dated to about 700,000 years old, the new findings shed light on the evolution of Homo floresiensis, the so-called hobbits of Flores. The newly recovered teeth are both exceptionally small, closer morphological similarities to early Javanese Homo erectus. Quote, the new fossils strongly suggest that the Hobbit story did indeed begin when Asian Homo erectus somehow became isolated on this remote Indonesian island one million years ago and underwent a dramatic body size reduction over time. End quote. Adam Broom, Griffith University, Australia. Chris Turney, Australia, Bing Video, 2008. Quote, in the 1950s, Christian archaeologist Father Verhoeven dug into this hillside and amazingly discovered lots of stone tools, which he argued were around one million years old. Continuing, quote, 
These tools suggested an ancient species of humans had been wandering around this area a lot earlier than was thought, end quote. Continuing, quote, Unfortunately for Verhoeven, not many people believed him at the time, end quote. Indonesian Villagers Mystery DNA Verhoeven also proposed that the local villagers in southern Flores might be descendants of an ancient hominid species, possibly Homo erectus. More to come on the Rampasasans. Living Hobbits? Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.